What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. And this is a video that I've been looking forward for a long time to be doing for you guys. I was going to leave this until the Boxing Day fixture between Arsenal versus Chelsea. But the way things are moving, Mikel Arteta might not even be in the Arsenal job by the time that game comes around. And I wanted to do this sort of video because I want to have a look back at the, at the sort of things that Arsenal fans have been saying throughout 2020 because look at what happened in August when we lost the FA Cup final and we were just getting clowned all over social media and they said Mikel Arteta outclassed Frank Lampard Mikel Arteta is bringing in a new era at Arsenal Football Club and look how quick it's come crashing down this was even quicker than my expectations but right now they are sitting 15th place in the Premier League it is their worst start in 45 years and everything is falling apart so in this video we're going to take a look at some of the things that Arsenal fans were saying back in August. We're going to take a look at how things are transpiring now and we're just going to sit here and enjoy the content. So guys, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that like button, press that subscribe button and smash the bell notification button as well. And let's get straight into what these Arsenal fans have been saying about us. Fun fact is, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in the last 14 days has scored more goals in this Wembley yeah, this Wembley Stadium then Frank Lampard has in his entire career. In his entire career. <laughs> First off, hindsight is beautiful when you get to come back and look at videos like this. Second off, I don't even get why Aubameyang and Lampard are even being compared in the same sentence. That is a huge disrespect to Frank Lampard and what he's done in the English game. But cool, Aubameyang might have scored more goals in Wembley than Frank Lampard has. Right now, that means absolutely nothing. Right now, Aubameyang has been ghosting the entire Premier League season. And Kurt Zuma has double Aubameyang's goals in this season in the Premier League. Obama who? Obama what? Obama black like Where? That's the real question we should be asking. A bummer where? Because ever since the FA Cup final, all this guy has done is disappear. He got that nice little juicy 390k a week contract and he's just been living the luxurious life since and he don't really care too much about Arsenal. One open play goal in the Premier League this season and if you think he's getting by with goals outside the competition and just stat padding in the Europa League, think again because Hector Bellerin has more foul throws than Aubameyang has goals in all competitions this season. Hey, my Lampard, you're not taking no coaching badges in Derby County. My brother, Mick Arteta, is coming from the La Masio Academy. Do you know what that means? Starting off Pep Guardiola, proper football. Ha, bro, we really shouldn't take it to La Masia. Come on now. La Masia would be absolutely disgraced that a graduate from their academy is promoting football like this. A manager that has you with a third least shots on target this season and the least chances created in the league as well. Big Mikel Arteta has got you, man, playing like this. Bro, please don't mention La Masia, man. It just gets more embarrassing at this point. Frank Lampard! This ain't Derby County, brother! This is the end! This is the end! Yo, are we really talking about this is the end when you lot are struggling to even handle your own ends? Fact is, Frank Lampard did the double over Jose Mourinho last season. The first manager to ever do that against Jose Mourinho. What's Mikel Arteta done? He's gone to White Hart Lane twice and he's gone and taken an L there twice. The last time Frank Lampard went there, he went there with Kepa in goal and he kept a clean sheet. So please, again, let's not put their names together. You understand? That me I said, these Chelsea men were running them out. I told them I keep the same fucking energy. What the fuck's your energy, blood? You ain't saying shit! Beam who, blood? Meme who? Two very boring minutes later. I'm going home, blood. Fuck this shit. I've been here, we ain't won one league game. We ain't won one league game. One! Son has the same amount of goals as us. He's a fucking player. We're a team. <laughs> True. Oh, I never God. change, bro. I love on, you, please. man. Please, please. Pop it. Go on, Saka. Come on, Saka. Oh, what kind of touch is that? Fuck what kind of fucking yeah, touch is that, blood? Yeah. What kind of fucking shit is this, blood? I'm gonna break something, though. I swear to God. I'm gonna break something. Hey, troops, I hate to say we told you so, but. <sighs> super Lampard. You ain't super nothing, blood. You're super whack, Ruth boy. Yeah? Man, when I told man, I'll take it, gonna take him to the corner shop, blood. And then take him Marco Spencer's. And then take him Selfridges. And then take him King, um, oh, wait, what, 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 what them take King's Road? Been 15! When have we been 15? When have we been 15? 
You see, this was the funny thing about everything that happened in August as well, because it was the exact same thing that happened in 2017. 2017, Arsenal dropped from second place to fifth place, but they put a plaster over the cracks by winning the FA Cup with the same scoreline against Chelsea, with the same BS ref as well, and they used it to say that this could be something to build on and something to potentially bring in a different era under a new manager, or in that case with the same manager under Arsene Wenger, and absolutely nothing happened. Arsenal just continued to fall further and further down as a club and this time in 2020 they went from 5th place down to 8th place and they thought the same thing was going to happen under Mikel Arteta and as usual Arsenal as a fan base they just never ever learn. You know our biggest chance of top 4 this season is if Chelsea and Manchester United don't sack their managers. Wait, what? I'm not even joking. Mm. Keep Lampard, keep Solskjaer, and we will finish above them. Aditi, seriously, I love you, bro, but I don't know where this confidence was coming from. Even from Arsenal fans in general, like, Arteta looked like he was pulling something off at the start, but even in that case, there's no way to think that Arsenal were even thinking of getting involved in the top four race before the season started. That is just madness, Where was this bro. confidence coming from? These guys finished eighth last season. Like, I properly deep it. These guys got knocked out of the Europa League at the round of 32 in their own ground by Olympiacos. And they're saying they could have made in the top four over us and even Manchester United. I mean, United look like a mess in their own way, but right now they're sitting in fourth place, so you can't even discredit them too much. Us, though... That FA Cup final must have gassed them up so mad because the, half the stuff they're saying now is a madness. Chelsea will not finish in the top four this season. There you go. Bookmark it. Say whatever you want about it. <sighs> DT, you really do it to yourself sometimes, bro. Come on now. Chelsea not making top four. Yo, the less I say, the better. But come on, man. Why was there this massive anti-Chelsea agenda though? Because I don't care too much. I mean, my Arsenal agenda is massive, but this just came out of nowhere after the FA Cup final. So I want to know, what was the reason for this? Chelsea, Chelsea literally won the lottery. Can't stand anything about them. Just please, just sink the ground into the Thames where they're next to them. Oh, so they're just jealous Roman bought us out. Okay, well, fair play. Agenda will run, I understand that. Um, two more European trophies than Arsenal before Roman Abramovich joined us and also more trophies won since the 70s if we want to go further back than 2003. But, uh, okay, yeah, we were just a money club with no history. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. But it's, it's so good, it's bad, because I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh at the end of me the too, season. Babes, me I, too, babes. Me too. I know. Look at Sophie's face. Look at Sophie's face. She knows exactly what is coming. She knows he's dug himself a hole that Arteta can't get him out of. But to be fair, this is what happens when you just sign Chelsea hand-me-downs on three-year contracts like Willian. Speaking of Willian, what were Arsenal fans saying when they signed Willian on a free transfer? Willian had a dream debut. Very dream debut. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. You know, huh? you have to pray Chelsea now. Thank you for William. Oh no, Kalechi, thank you. Honestly, pleasure's all yours. Thank you. All of this, that it's a retirement home and all this rubbish. L listen, William rejected Chelsea. I've already said that. And he's still got a good few years left in him. And he's still got a lot to offer for Arsenal for the overall package. Package? What package? Sideways passes, 
corners that can't beat the first man or corners that have so much power on it they beat everyone and go out for a throw in no you keep that bro Retirement home would be getting rid of Olivier Giroud and replacing him with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Shut up. I mean, seeing as Olivier Giroud scored as many goals in one game against Sevilla as Aubameyang has done in all competitions this season, I actually think we got the better one out of the deal. His appearances, first and foremost, he's playing a lot of games. Um, so he's ever present in the Chelsea side and that's what we need. Yes, that is exactly what you need. An ever present William that is always going to be fit and firing to be able to play regularly for the Arsenal. And the good thing is, we're 11 games into the Premier League season. So with that in mind, he should have properly assimilated into the Arsenal squad and should be fully understanding Mikel Arteta's style of play. So with 11 games in, let's take a look at how William is settling into his new club. Hey! Oh my fuck god! Fuck off! Fuck game off! off yo. No, game off! Look where the show's gone! It's nearly gone up for fucking throwing! Yep, same old William. Fair play. That was so bad. bad. He's given a goal kick, I think. Uh, do you know what? He's nearly had a shot that's I gone out for a throw in. He's scared. He's, look how scared. No! Oh, it's is. fucking abysmal! That's Piss off! That's terrible. Piss off! Great cross again. I'll pay for his fucking Uber over back to West London and go to Chelsea, man. Every time we get that a Chelsea so player, bad. they're fucking shit. We get all their fucking sloppy seconds all the time. That's fucking about, that's about the third group. Group. <laughs> Hey, bro, you need to check the terms and conditions on that contract because there is no returns. We are not taking him back. He is now property of Arsenal Football Club for the next three years. That is totally your problem now, bro. Go on, Willie. Oh, fucking put your legs through it. Fucking Chelsea reject. <laughs> fucking shit! No oh, man, why is he mate. fucking trying to let it go out for a corner? <laughs> fucking idiot! Seriously, uh, he, he can't have no more chances after this. I'm gonna throw it. You know what I mean? Willie's got to be dropped. I was actually team Willie. Don't be harsh on him. He's trying to let the ball come. The ball's come down, Laurie. Oh, no. Fucking hit it. it but is. he's like, no, I'm gonna let it bounce because I want it to go out for a corner so I can hit the first man. Yeah, no, I was team William, but. <laughs> I DT, bro, I hate to say I told you so. I hate to say we told you so. Mm, well, we kind of enjoy it a little bit. But same way, I, we told all you Arsenal fans that this would happen. We told you William was a massive hustler. Hell, we did also kind of say he turned up against Tottenham and he didn't really do that. But I don't really know who William hates more, Spurs or Arsenal at this point. But we know exactly which team he does still love. He's still a Chelsea boy. Hopefully, Agent William doesn't turn around and perform some judge on Boxing Day because honestly, this video is going to get clipped to death if he produces a goal, which would be peak William. But until then, guys, I hope you lot enjoyed this video. It was a new piece of content for you guys, but I was looking forward to doing this one for ages. And with Mikel Arteta looking very likely like he's going to be getting the, tap the sack soon, I thought I might as well drop this video before I lose the chance to do it. So guys, if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, press the subscribe button, smash the bell notification button as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Chelsea Krasnodar game. I might still do a preview. I might not. Let me know if you guys want to see it down in the comment section below. It's really up to you lot because this game is so pointless. I don't know if you lot would sit through the video. But if you lot want to see it, let me know. But until tomorrow, I'll see you lot. Take care and up the chels.